Walsh, before we bring you up here to present you with this wonderful award, there is a very talented and lovely lady that came all the way from England to be here tonight because she loves you. This very talented lady is not only an Academy Award winning actress, she is currently an active member of the House of Parliament, Miss Glenda Jackson. <laughs> two films with this quite extraordinary and wonderful man, Hopscotch and House Calls. In one he played a doctor and in the other he played a spy. And it's not easy to be charming in either occupation, but Walter always managed to pull it off. And speaking of pulling it off, I've always been envious of my good friend Carol Burnett, because while she only did one film with Walter, she still got to see a side of him in Pete and Tilly <laughs> that very few people get to see. Could we roll the tape, please? Hey! Get yourself a new song or a new girl! I understand when the scene was over, you turned and reveal the side of you that millions of us have come to know and love. <laughs> look at that face, just look fabulous face of yours. I knew first look I took at it, this was the face that world adores. Look at those eyes, as wise and as deep as the sea. Look at that nose, it shows what a nose should be. As for your smile, it's lyrical, friendly and warm as a summer's day. Your face is such a miracle, where would I ever find words to say? What I find when I look at that face. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet our friend, Mr. Walter Matthau. Here you are, my friend. Richly deserved. Here, here to that. I had no idea that Glenda Jackson could sing. <laughs> Just for you. We used to play word games a lot. So this uh, acceptance speech that I've written will have a lot of the words defined because even though Glenda is a member of Parliament and a member of the British Isles uh, citizen, uh, subject. What are you? Subject. <laughs> we don't have a written constitution. She still doesn't really know the language too well. <laughs> now, when people see you playing a part, they think you are the part. I'm told that I play avuncular parts very well. Uh, avuncular, Glenda, means <laughs> uh, 
having characteristics of an uncle. Thank you, Walter. You're welcome. If you play a curmudgeon, which I see in the program, curmudgeon, by the way, Glenda, yes, is uh, an avaricious, it's a word that surprised me for curmudgeon, churlish, cantankerous individual. Born to play it. Right. <laughs> the word curmudgeon is from the French, Glenda. Uh, and they spelled it wrong. Cœur méchant, or evil heart. So what I'm saying is that in real life, I am a curmudgeon. Now that I've cleared all of this up, I think that George Slaughter, a righteous man who produced this aberration, <laughs> aberration, Glenda, <laughs> according to Webster's new universal dictionary, is a deviation from moral rectitude. Thank you, Walter. Welcome. <laughs> and I would like to take this opportunity of thanking Carol Mathau for putting up with my aberrations, no matter what they may be. Thank you very much. Stay tuned as the Comedy Hall of Fame honors Jonathan Winters, Milton Burl, and Red Skelton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jason Alexander. Thank you very much. Throughout history, the unwritten rule of all the arts is that there are no rules. That is never more true than in the world of comedy. But despite uh, the enormous freedom that every comic enjoys, there are several facts that bemuse them, one and all. The funny guy never saves the day. The funny guy never takes the final bow. And is beautifully stated in this touching ballad. The funny guy never, ever gets the girl. Funny, did you hear that? Funny, hear the girl say, honey, you're a funny guy. That's me, I just keep them Stitches Double hands Oh, I may be all wrong for the girls I'm good for a laugh I guess it's not funny Life is far from sunny When the laugh is over And the joke's on you A guy's gotta have a sense of humor It's one thing you really need for sure When you're a 